All right, 533 this morning, all new. Earlier this morning, we heard about the Consumer Product Safety Commission lowering inspections this year, including on toys. And now we have information about what you should do if your child is injured by a toy. First News reporter Simone Blair is live in the newsroom with more details. Simone. That's right, Brandon. The CPSC estimates that roughly 200,000 kids last year were sent to the emergency room nationwide after they were injured while playing with a toy. Yet that agency has been limiting their screenings on toys this year due to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, which some experts are warning could lead to some faulty toys falling through the cracks. I spoke with local attorney Frank Cassis about what Mahoning Valley families should do if their child is injured by a faulty toy. He says families could work with an attorney on a product liability case. The case will aim to prove that there has been a manufacturing defect, a design flaw, or that the toy company failed to warn consumers about something like a choking hazard. I, I would caution anyone with it's not as simple as oh my child got hurt by a toy you know these these manufacturers and these toy companies aren't just going to pay um, one of the first things they're going to look at is whether or not the toy was modified or misused explains that taking apart a toy or misusing it like riding a scooter on the highway for example would end a product liability case but he did provide some steps families should follow if a child has been injured by a toy while playing with it correctly first a family should report the product to the cpsc that way it could help other families from being injured by the same product second he says you should contact an attorney to see if the manufacturer could be at fault for the injury Third, he says it is important to keep the product. Without it, he says it is all but impossible to proceed with a case against the company. Cassis did say he has seen some cases ended after someone lost the product that they were injured by. Uh, this hasn't happened yet for him with a toy, uh, but more so with cars that had faulty airbags that were towed away from the scene. Uh, but with keeping a toy uh, or a product, it is very important to make sure it's hidden away so that no one in the family accidentally uses it. And Simone, you mentioned the number of toy related injuries that went to the ER, but just how serious were some of these injuries? Yeah, Brandon, uh, so the, the majority uh, the children were safe after a quick visit, returned home with their families and, and all was well. Uh, but there are some deadly incidents that happen with toys. Uh, in 2019, the CPSC reported that 14 kids under the age of 15 uh, died from toy related injuries, uh, either from accidents on a scooter or from choking on a on you know, a small part of a toy. Uh, and for that reason, families are encouraged to check out all of their products and their toys on the Safer Products website that the CPSC runs. Uh, and if you do end up figuring out that one of your products is faulty uh, or heaven forbid you are injured by it, uh, you should make sure to report it on the website to help out other families. Uh, we will have that link available for everyone later on this morning. Live in the newsroom, Simone Blair, First news this morning.